We can date the Voynich manuscript with some accuracy. The physical artifact itself, the materials, the vellum, the ink, can be dated reliably to the first half of the 1400s. This is confirmed by the nature of the book, the writing, the clothing depicted and so on. We can confidently place the work in the first half of the 1400s or not much later. But where? Where was it written? In what place? In what location? It's written in Europe, certainly, but where in Europe? Over the years, people have tried to place it everywhere from Spain to London to Russia. But sober opinion recognises that the work resembles the alchemical herbals that were prolific in the northern Italian intellectual milieu in the relevant period, along with other clues, clothing styles and so on. And so it seems a likely place to start looking. And it's especially confirmed by details on the enigmatic map included in the work, the so-called Rosette Folio, because here, as has long been noted, we find conspicuous depictions of a distinctive style of medieval fortification, the swallow-tailed Merlin, which is typical of northern Italy. These type of V-shaped trenellations on walls and castles is a trademark of the Ghibelline party in medieval politics, which is to say the party of the Holy Roman Emperor, rather than the Guelphs, the party of the Pope. Ghibelline castles and fortifications typically had swallow-tailed crenellations. So this detail on the map places it specifically in Ghibelline territory, regions under the control of the Holy Roman Emperor. And this is as much to say Germanic regions. The Holy Roman Emperor controlled Sicily and parts of southern Italy for centuries. And there are some Ghibelline castles with swallow-tailed merlins in southern Italy still. But the Voynich map depicts a rugged, mountainous terrain. And there are many alpine herbs in the book. And so we are depict, directed to the more extensive Ghibelline lands in alpine northern Italy, the mountainous border between the Latin south and the Germanic north. But swallowtail crenellations are in fact found on Ghibelline castles across a wide area in the Alpine regions, from the Eastern Alps all the way through to Switzerland. The question then becomes whether it is the Eastern or Western Alpine parts of Northern Italy. There are some French labels that have been added by someone to the Zodiac pages in the manuscript at some stage. So we know it was in the hands of a French speaker. This leads some to the western parts of the northern Italian Alpine regions, where they look for the right conjunction of languages. There is a rich herbal tradition in that region, as we know from Paracelsus, who was born in rural Switzerland in that area, and who championed its herbal medicine. But there's also a rich tradition of indigenous herbal medicine in the east, in the Sud Tyrol, the Germanized regions of Italy under the control of the Counts of Tyrol, and after that under the Habsburgs. Swallowtailed Merlins in an alpine terrain are conspicuous here, and the region has a herbal tradition extending back before ancient Roman times. There are other clues in the map concerning the terrain. We have, most importantly, depictions of distinctive mushroom towers, peculiar rock formations along with the Ghibelline crenellations. This helps us confirm our identification. In the context, and given the other evidence, these formations seem to be such as we find in the Dolomites, in Alpine South Tyrol, but which we don't find elsewhere. They are Dolomitic formations. We find these so-called Earth Pyramids, as they are presented to tourists these days, 
in several locations in South Tyrol. They are typical of that region, they are famous. They are not found in the western alpine regions or in Switzerland. They, form the erosion, they are formed from the erosion of the Dolomite bedrock into the sort of surreal landforms shown on the Voynich map. We can therefore narrow it down. Of where is the Rosette Folio a map? The swallowtail architecture depicted points us to Ghibelline territory and the rugged terrain to the north, not the south. East or west is the question. Both have alpine herbal traditions, but only in the east, in the Sud Tyrol, South Tyrol, the ancient Brennan road between the March of De Verona and Austria, only in the Dolomite Mountains do we find the peculiar landscapes also depicted on the map. It is not just the Swallowtail Merlins, it is the Swallowtail Merlins and the strange mushroom landscape in which they are depicted. This surely puts us in the eastern alpine regions, in that herbal tradition, rather than in Switzerland, France or anywhere else. We have two things to match, merlins and mushrooms. Where do we find merlins and mushrooms? South Tyrol, and only South Tyrol. We can therefore provide the manuscript with a general geographical location, at least down to a broad region. The evidence tells us that it comes from the South Tyrol. So that is what we have a map of in the Rosette Folio. There we are presented with a mountain landscape stylized into a system of nine circles. We can establish that the mountain landscape in question is the Alpine South Tyrol, the Dolomites. The distinctive mushroom landforms of that region appear on the map and are connected to all the other parts of the map in a continuous geography. There is no basis whatsoever for supposing the circles of the map are remote continents, Africa, America and so on. It's a map of a continuous rugged mountain landscape in which we find buildings with ghibelline merlins and strange landforms that look like mushrooms. It's a God's eye view of the Dolomitic geology of the Alpine South Tyrol. There are many interpretations of these features on the Voynich map, most of them wildly off and some of them bizarre. But if we know the South Tyrol in Northern Italy, if we know that landscape, we recognize these forms immediately. They are unique land formations found in the same area as castles and walls with ghibelline crenellations. In fact, there are more reliable guide. Architecture changes over the centuries. Castles fall down and are rebuilt. The topography is enduring and far more constant. To go over it again, where does this map depict? There are swallowtail crenellations Ghibelline architecture in a mountain setting. This could be either the eastern or the western parts of northern Italy, since both have the relevant architecture and were regions under the Holy Roman Empire and had their own herbal traditions. But the map also shows distinctive land formations that we find in the eastern Alpine regions, the Dolomites, and not in the west. We are therefore directed to eastern northern Italy the region known today as South Tyrol, the Sud Tyrol. Where do we find ghibelline architecture in the same landscape as these mushroom-shaped land formations? Only there. And it fits, as I say, an abundance of other evidence, most especially the fact that this region is famous for its very rich and very ancient traditions of alpine herbal medicine. The French labels on the zodiac pages could have been added any time, whereas there is stronger evidence, marginalia, that some dialect of German might have been the native language of the author. The Sud Tyrol, in any case, is linguistically remarkable 
hosting an array of strange languages developed and maintained in remote mountain communities. It is very likely as a matrix for the peculiar linguistics of the voynich. My concern though is with the rosette folio, the map. We need to situate the voynich manuscript within a landscape, within a geographical context, and it is the map above all that invites us to do so. What an extraordinary item of cartography it is, the Voynich map. There is really nothing else like it, even in the strange world of medieval maps. It demands an explanation. A large fold-out map like this is very unusual in books of this period. It's one of the reasons people have suspected the work is a fake. fake. Fold-out maps like this are typical of a much later period. But the hard facts tell us the work is real, circa 1430, and the map is an outstanding peculiarity in a very peculiar book. It is surely offered to us as a key to the work. We have a secure chronological context, the 1400s, most likely the first half, so let us say circa 1430, or perhaps a window 1420 to 1450. That would not be too far astray. But it's crucial to have a geographical context, to attach it to a place. What is the place it offers us in this remarkable map? The answer is the Sud Tyrol, the German-speaking regions of northeastern Italy. Note the Ghibelline crenellations, the swallowtail merlins, are dispersed throughout the map, not confined to just one part. So it's all the same region, all Ghibelline territory and all the same rocky terrain. Without venturing to offer possible identifications of specific places, it's enough at this point to just understand where we are. We are in the Sud Tyrol, in northern Italy, the Alpine regions, the Dolomites. I've argued elsewhere that the stylization into nine circles concerns the sanctification of local landscapes in Italy at the end of the Crusades. No doubt the central panel in the map alludes to Jerusalem, but a local landscape is being given that symbolic sanctity. I've also argued that the six onion-shaped spires or towers in the central rosette are mountains presented as candle flames lit by the open glow a simple Christian symbolism such as we find in the Sud Tyrol, mountain symbolism. For all of that symbolism, this is a map of places in the Sud Tyrol. That is the locale that fits the evidence best. It is not a fantasy map, of some as, as some have supposed. It's not something out of Tolkien. It's a real map of a real region. We can identify it through the merlins and the mushrooms, two distinctive features in a very distinct landscape. Assuredly, the map is highly stylized, and the cartographer has his own eccentric devices. But it's not a flight of nonsense or fancy. It depicts geographical realities. We can say, in fact, and I say it with some confidence, that it is a map of the Sud Tyrol, or parts thereof, or perhaps more likely, from landmarks from that landscape arranged symbolically, systemized for some purpose. And the Voynich manuscript is therefore from, or at least about, the same region. That's its geographical context. It's vitally important in this not to pursue red herrings, not to accumulate points of evidence without some way of putting them in order. It is a quest to see what is plain and obvious and relevant and not to get lost in the fog of conundrums. Narrow it down. Europe, Italy, Northern Italy, Eastern Northern Italy. The work is from the Quattrocento, the herbal traditions of the South Tyrol. It comes from that region in that period and starts to make sense as a document when placed in that landscape within that historical time frame. It can only be understood in its proper context. If you think it's a long forgotten work by Roger Bacon, 
you're lost and no map is going to help you. Scholarship on the Voynich Manuscript is a swamp. Some of the features of the map become very plain once we turn to that geographical context. We can begin to read it and match the conventions of the map to the landscape. Perhaps the most obvious are the depictions of landslides, the hills of debris, the moraine as it's called, that characteristically skirt the mountain peaks of the Dolomites. The region is geographically otherworldly and surreal. It's a remarkable landscape. Indeed, it is now a World Heritage Site, a natural wonder. If you immerse yourself in this terrain, this topography, you begin to enter the world depicted in its entirely unique way, in the Vonage Manuscript, where it's seen from above, in a God's eye view, through the filter of a late medieval imagination.